So did you, uh, uh, so, you know, being inside with the kids for snow apocalypse? Yeah. Snow snowpocalypse 2019! <laughs> When you went to Walmart, did you load up on some board games or anything like that? Or did you buy a video game? What did you do? Uh, no, I actually bought a lot of food dye. I feel like you're not following me on this one. Okay, not. I like so I have this. a house full of boys. So the theory here is that if the house and we get snowed in, right? Like if the snow covers the front door and we can't leave, we can open up our windows on the second story and if we eat a lot of food dye over a course of a couple days, it will turn our pee colors. Just pee out the window. I didn't buy red though. I needed to make sure that if we if this started to, you know, make our kidneys bleed, like we could see them <laughs> blood. So I didn't do that. But I'm just curious, if you adjust a lot of food dye, will that turn your pee colors? I don't know. Let's Stop. test those kidneys. Call CPS now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm clearly kidding. It's in Lockport. <laughs> I'm clearly joking. Hold up. Yay! <laughs> Sunday drive. <laughs> <laughs> Comment, like, subscribe, repeat. Oh, surprise, surprise, McDermott hired somebody from Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> Not technically. Yeah, because they never work together. Yeah, blah, blah, I'll, blah. Semantics, semantics, semantics. I have a stinking feeling that phone calls were made. People yeah. were contacted. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Hey, Ron. Yeah. Guess what? Mm -hmm. you, just, you need a special teams coach. Right. Well, look, you know what, the, the one that gets me right now is, because um, the Bills hired the assistant offensive line coach from Car from uh, the Colts, right, to be their new offensive line coach. Gotcha. Well, Frank Wright got, fired the offensive line coach and his staff, right? Mm hmm And do you remember why Frank Reich fired somebody from his coaching staff? Because it was Josh McDaniels hired? Yeah, it was the only one. <laughs> <laughs> it was the only one that was still there. He's like, no, I got to get my own guys in here. And that's... That's what an offensive-minded coach goes through. He's like, I gotta get my own guys. That's yep. it, you did a great job, I gotta get my own guys. Thank it's, you, you thank got you. hired, I couldn't help that. You were here before you, I even got here. Yeah, But and, and Wright did the right thing by you know, not releasing him from his contract you know, and, and pushing for that when he got there. He's like, okay, listen, you know, we're gonna be fine, yeah. whatever, we'll make it work. Um, you know, This and, guy, he probably, I mean, he could have if he didn't think the guy could do the job. The guy did the job. And you know what? Everyone likes to marvel about the things that he's done. Uh, you know, the offensive line coach. And I understand that he did. A, he did a great job this year. But you, when one of your guys is Quentin Nelson, I know. And Costanzo has been there for a number of years. Yeah. Um, you know, you had two solid linemen right there. That you know. So how do you how do you develop? How does he develop guys? That's what I'm curious to see. Yeah, it's you know, again. I get a little worried when we start talking about adding Bills coaches and specifically coaches without a ton of tenure because, again, like when you're initially building your staff, right? You mm -hmm. build a staff of, if you've never been a head coach before, you get in some guys who are going to have some influence who have been head coaches before. And then after a while, you slowly start siphoning those guys out because those guys might start looking for a head coaching job again yep. and they might leave you, yeah. right? So now McDermott looks like they're he's bringing in guys that are going to drink the Kool-Aid a little bit. Like, well, come yeah. and I'll show you the ways. Come, young Padwan, I shall show you the ways. <laughs> it's it's also, too, he's bringing in guys that, I mean, if you're relative unknown, you're going to you're gonna try to be noticed. Oh, absolutely. And you're going to work your tail off. Sure. So, I mean, that's, that's one of the reasons I like it. Yeah, it's, I mean, the only issue that I have with it, as always, is I'm, I'm worried about how that person's gonna step up and control the room the first time it's their room, right? So, if, you know what though, but you don't have, like if, if you're talking about specifically the offensive line, <clears throat> it's not like there are three guys on that line that are eight year veterans. Right. So he's, got, he's coming in and be like, this guy think he's doing, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like if you're a senior in high school and you got a first year teacher. Like, I've been in high school more than you have. <laughs> <laughs>
I like it in that aspect and the fact that he can carve out his, his own little thing. Um, but then again, you still have another guy that's not going to challenge McDermott in the, in the room. Yeah, big And time. I don't, that, that's something that I would, I think fosters growth is is that challenging. I, I think Frazier challenges them, and look, they're the second overall defense this year. Yeah. Now, mind you, we're not talking about coordinators, we're talking about position coaches. So it's not, I mean, how often are they going to be asked to step up and, and lead and guide? I mean, it's not really... Yeah, you know it, it's not really well, the we, role necessarily. Well, no, we talked about with Cromer though. He was a former oh. offensive coordinator, right. and that benefited him when he was the O line coach because he, he understood the whole scope of the offense. Right. Yeah, we That's don't really one. have that. Two is, I think that this line for Tim Hortons is longer than Universal. <laughs> well, Mario, we're recording this during Snowpocalypse 2019. <laughs> Get your bread. Get your milk. Make sure you acquire things that will expire in seven days. I went to Walmart last night just to grab, really, not to grab milk, and just to grab, like, oh, let me grab some, you know, stuff that I could throw in the crock pot, just so that way we have something that's fun. Okay, that was ridiculous, because I walk in, and there's literally no bread in the store. They had no bread. They had four gallons of milk. That's it. I go, guys, stop being so stereotypical, America. <laughs> go to the store, get bread and milk, or we're going to get snowed in. I would, rather, I would rather drive somewhere on New Year's Eve or go shopping on Thanksgiving Eve than go to Walmart. In Lockport? No, no, the, no. the eve before snowstorm? On, on a snowstorm. Yeah. Uh, uh, but eve before a snowstorm. That just... <laughs> you got a grudge against yourself if you go in there. <laughs> There's a page dedicated to the people of Walmart. I think she's all right. Isn't that... Next to the Craigslist ad that we got our coaches from. <laughs> oh my god, this guy. <laughs> so we still don't have wide receivers coach, but whatever. Whatever, that's not a position that we care about right now, right? That's not a position of need. We're fine. We're fine, right? No, no, we're not. You know, do you think part of the process is bringing guys to kiss the ring, even if you don't have one? Do not challenge his authority. Yeah, I mean, that's what that's what it seems like. You respect my authority. And again, you the, the transition, and you had mentioned it before. The transition is he's moving away from guys that he was comfortable with, building his first staff that he could trust, and now bringing in guys that you know he thinks that, are going to improve the position. That is the process. Yeah, learning what's going to be happening in that respect. So yeah, the the process that we talked about is the fact that he's never been a head coach before. Um, if he knows or he's been familiar with what's been going on at One Bill's Drive over the last twenty years, hey, you guys just cycle people out. We need we need consistency here. <laughs> yeah, we need to cycle the right people out. I'm gonna go with people that I know that could that I can can do the job now. Now that there's that they can do the job, there's varying degrees. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I, I hate to harken it back to to uh, to teaching, but that's what I do in the classroom. You know, first of all, they got to understand. They have to have the basic, basic understanding of the concept or the materials that are being taught. Then from there, you can start putting the building blocks on. All right, do you know this? Do you know this? Can you can you solve this? Can you uh, if it's put in a you can solve it now. If it's put in a word problem, can you decipher what you need from that word problem in order to do it? And Castillo could not do it. Okay, Rubisky just had enough of it. Um, but what they're not doing is they're not questioning the teacher at all. So your perspective is when you talk about the process, the process isn't about necessarily building a winning franchise. It's about giving McDermott the tools to understand when he needs to and when he should and when he shouldn't cut bait from players, cut bait from coaches, when he's determined that the people driving the bus are not necessarily people who should be on the bus. So you're saying the process isn't just about the players and winning. Yeah, because I think the narrative will change once he has the right people in place. And he's got to figure that out. The process is him, like you said, the process is him figuring it out. I don't think, I mean, I think wins and losses do matter. I don't yeah. want to say that part of it is necessarily false, but I think that he's 
the process is we have to try to build something here that is sustainable. I mean, Bill Walsh, I know you don't like how much I quote him, you know. He said, he said, the head coach nowadays is shifting. He's, he's, more, he's, less, <clears throat> he's less head coach. He's even more press secretary now. Mm -hmm. So he's a guy that has to be the figurehead of this organization. So if you're the figurehead or if you're the guy that has to just take care of the media and take care of all the X's and O's off of the field, what do you have to do? You have to equip the guys on the field to take care of your team. All right. I, am I saying that he doesn't coach? No, I'm not saying he doesn't coach. Am I saying he doesn't make personnel decisions and all that stuff? No, I'm not saying that. He, he doesn't. But what I'm saying is that he, the process is him putting the right pieces in place to coach his team. So the process is him learning to delegate which responsibilities yes. and whom to delegate them to. Yes. So why? Because he's not familiar with offense. He was the first year. I'm, not, I'm a defensive guy. Maybe I'm not familiar with the offensive intricacies of what's going on because I've been a defensive coordinator and that's where I have resided. Okay, who am I going to hire? Former head coach Leslie Frazier. Mm -hmm. Can you take care of this while I go over there and learn this? Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. And then week two. Well, that's why they're running Frazier's defense. Yeah. That's. I mean, that's why. And, and then week two, he he had he about had enough. Mm -hmm. I got to do something. You know what I mean? It's like. That guy that retires but like wants to throw a couple more pitches afterward, you know what I mean? You mean John Gruden? <laughs> Johnny! 